Are your students struggling with writing a scientific explanation using the claim evidence reasoning format? No worries. Today, I'm going to take you through how to easily help your students write a scientific explanation using the claim evidence reasoning format. And I have seven steps that will help them in that process. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm a middle school science teacher with over 20 years experience in the classroom, and I love helping other teachers empower their students, teaching them skills of success. Now, if you find this video was helpful, please go ahead and share it with your other teacher friends. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. So that way you're aware of other videos just like this that are coming out to you. Okay, let's go and get started. When writing a scientific explanation, whether it's for chemistry, biology, earth science, physics, the first thing you'll want to do is you want to identify what question are you trying to answer? What are you making your claim about? So let's look at this one here. This one is for a motion experiment. And as you can see, it's got a little information, it's got a data table, it's got a graph. And at the bottom it says, did the fastest land animal win the race? So that is the question that is trying to be answered here. Did the fastest land animal win the race? And I'm gonna go ahead and write that right here in my uh, template for writing my, C my claim evidence reasoning. Now that you have your question, it's now time to actually look at the experiment, read the information, look at the data table, look at the graph to try and come up with a claim to that question. So it talks about how there's a debate over who would win a five kilometer race with some of the fastest land, water and air animals. And there's a computer simulation that was done to track the animals. And here are the results. And here it's telling us the fastest recorded speed for each animal, and it's identifying if the animal is a land animal, water, and air. Remember, the question is about the fastest land animal. So let's go ahead and identify which one's the fastest. So the fastest recorded speed is for land is 120 kilometers, and that right here is the cheetah. Let's see if that's actually the fastest animal. The fastest animal right here, though, is the peregrine falcon and that's 320 so i'm going to go ahead and highlight that part there and let's see what the fastest water animal is and that is the black marlin so i'm identifying the three fastest animals based on where they live they're in the land in air and water and i'm identifying that the cheetah is the fastest overall so i'll just change that color there so that I know that, that that's the cheetah and these are the other ones. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the race. Let's see who won the race. Now remember with motion, the faster you cover a distance in the shortest amount of time, well, that's the fastest speed, right? That's the one who's gonna win the race. We're looking for who completed that five kilometer distance in the shortest amount of time. And if we look at that, it is going to be this one right here which is a purple kind of dashed line. And if I identify that part, it's right down here. And it said it's the white throated needle tail. White throated needle tail is the one that finishes the race first. Now, I also want to look at my fastest land animal. That was the cheetah. The cheetah is in red here. So I'm just going to identify the cheetah in red there. And let's see where it is. Well, it doesn't even finish the race. It, it comes to a little less than five kilometer mark there. It doesn't really finish the race. It doesn't even get to make five kilometers. It goes fast and then kind of stops and peters out. The Peregrine Falcon is interesting because that one was the fastest air, right? Where the white throated needle tail was the slowest of the air animals. But the Peregrine Falcon, as we can see right here, it does go very fast, but then it kind of tapers out. So it doesn't hold that, maintain that speed. Whereas the white-throated needle tail does maintain the speed. 
All right, so it's not necessarily the fastest speed who's gonna win this race, it looks like. It looks like the one who has the fastest average speed over that five kilometer distance. That's the one that won the race. So I'm gonna write down some information into my evidence. First, I'm gonna identify the fastest animals and write their speeds down. Okay, so there's my evidence. And how do I know? I know that the faster, I know that the more distance you can cover in a shorter amount of time tells their speed. Okay, so there's that. Now let's talk about who actually won the race here. Again, we had the white-throated needle tail um, cross the five kilometer finish line first, followed by the black marlin, and then after that, it's the golden eagle. All right, so I have who the evidence of who are the fastest. I have the evidence of who actually won the race and what happened to the fastest land animal. Because I remember I was asking, did the fastest land animal win the race? And there's my reasoning. Okay, so now after I've got all that, I looked at my evidence, now I can actually come up with a claim to the question. And again, I can use sentence starters to help me out. It's important that when you're writing your claim, you do include part of the words from the actual questions, right? So the question was, did the fastest land animal win the race? Plain and simply, no. Now I'm gonna get into my evidence. What is my evidence? I need to include evidence that I know that the cheetah is the fastest, but I also need to include evidence of who actually won the race. So I come here, right? I know that these are the fastest ones, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this information right here using sentence starters, right? According to the data, and first I'm gonna use the data, right? The data table. Now for my reasoning. Well, why am I using that information, right? Why did I use the information about the numbers for the speed numbers? Why did I use the information about when they cross the line, And right? And that's the reasoning here, the I know part. And again, I can use my sentence starters to help me out. This indicates, it supports. Um, this is important because it suggests, or I know, right? So I had a question, I looked at the information, I've made my claim, I recorded the evidence to support that claim and gave the reason of why I used that evidence. And now it's time to put it all together into a paragraph. So first I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm on a digital one, so it makes it easy just to copy and paste. If it's not digital, if it's paper, you'll have to write it again. And then again, a scientific explanation is a paragraph. It's not separate sentences or separate segments. So you're gonna put it all together as one paragraph, just copying and pasting as you go. And a paragraph, of course, is indented. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna read through it. It's really important that you read through the whole entire thing to see if maybe you wanna change it up, if it doesn't flow correctly. So for example, I'm gonna read through the whole thing. The fastest land animal was the cheetah and it did not win the race. According to the data table, the fastest recorded land animal is the cheetah at 120 kilometers per hour. The fastest water animal is the black marlin at 132 kilometers per hour. And the fastest air animal is the peregrine falcon at 320 kilometers per hour. The graph shows that the white-throated needle tail finished the five kilometer race first with a time under two minutes. The black marlin came in second with a time slightly over two minutes and the cheetah stops running around 0.5 kilometers. I know that the larger the speed number, the more distance it can move in a given time and the faster it is. The animal that crosses the finish line in the shortest amount of time is the winner. This indicated that although the cheetah had the fastest land time, it did not cross the finish line indicating that it did not win. The peregrine falcon was the fastest animal overall, however it came in after the white throat needle tailed, showing that having the fastest speed doesn't mean you can maintain that speed over a long period of time. 
Therefore, I can conclude that the cheetah with the fastest land speed did not win the race. Okay, so as I'm reading this, it's kind of choppy. And what I want to do is I want to change my location of my reasoning. I want to put what I know about the speed right after I talk about the speed of the animal. So I'm going to put right here that I know the larger the speed. I'm going to copy that, get rid of it there, and put it right after here, right after I talk about the speeds. Then I go into the graphs and that. Now, in this one, I talk about the peregrine falcon, but I did not include the peregrine falcon when it crossed the finish line. And since I talked about how the peregrine falcon here, I probably do need to indicate that evidence. So if I look at the peregrine falcon and I find it, peregrine falcon is the dotted line, and it comes in at around three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and add that evidence here right after it talks about the graph. Let's see here, black marlin, two, I'll put it right before the cheetah, right? The peregrine falcon finished at around three minutes there. And the cheetah then finished then. Okay. So now I have that. I want to make sure it's all the same size that all goes together nicely and there I have that information once you have it you can also go ahead and do a check did your claim include the keywords in the question answer the question yes it did evidence states where the information comes from yep according to the data Includes observations found in the data table. Yep, I put the numbers in and the actual numbers when appropriate. Yes. Explains how the evidence supports the claim. Yes, I did. States why the evidence is important. I didn't talk about why it's important. Um, includes a concluding sentence, but I did talk about that. So sometimes you need to talk about why it's important. Sometimes you don't need to have it. Um, it all depends on what the scientific explanation is, is doing. And then go through, check for spelling. Uh, you can also have someone else check for grammar and, and do the uh, peer editing also. And there you have how to write a scientific explanation, in this case, doing it for one about motion. For more claim and evidence reasoning practice examples like the one you saw in this video, go ahead and check out the description where I have a link to not only this claim evidence reasoning practice, but other practices as well. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.